some are back in so far, you know, land performance has certainly suffered. You know, we would have taken a number of faecal egg counts over the, the summer period there and, um, you know, certainly has been a challenging year with worms, but, you know, we have been keeping on top of, of that as well. And I suppose now it's just to finally give them the last push to, to, to get them shifted off the farm as well. Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Ubicast, the Chaga Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you the latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. Now we're joining this week's episode by Fergus Rook and Niall Conaghy from Chagas Ballyhees Agriculture College in County Cavan. Now with the rams out with the college flock at the moment, Niall discusses the breeding plan for the farm, mate management as well as how they manage condition right throughout the season. Now like many farms are experiencing very difficult grazing conditions at the moment, Niall talks us about how they've adapted management to achieve graze outs particularly in fields with heavy covers as well as the closing plan for the farm and what their targets are. Fergus discusses land performance-wise, some of the challenges they face this season, and why they've housed the remaining man lambs on the farm in recent days. We hear first from Fergus, who gives us a bit of background to the farm and the flock itself. For some of your listeners that don't know, Ballyhays College, you know, we're located about eight kilometres north of Cavan Town there. I suppose we're situated on an estate that's about 220 hectares of grass and woodland, and we're operating as an ag college since 1906. So I suppose the sheep unit itself is 24 hectares of relatively free draining soil, some of which is hilly, but it's all very manageable. I suppose we're very much in uh, Drumlin country. And I suppose of the of the 24 hectares, 17 hectares of that is is grazed by the by the flock, and the other seven hectares is used as silage ground um, for other enterprises on the farm. But I suppose the, the sheep have access to this as grazing in the shoulders of the year. The flock um, is a commercial flock. You know, it is, it is run commercially, but it is also used for the education purposes in the in the college as well. So I suppose the flock consists of, we say this year it was 176 yos, um, you know, predominantly suffer cross, there's some Texas, Belclair yos as well. Um and they went to Belclare, Suffolk, Texel, and Charlie Rams as well. Um, I suppose the farm operates a mid-season lambing system. Uh, we're lambing slightly earlier than most, maybe, and that we're planning to kick off on the 25th of February. But I suppose, as mentioned previously, you know, the flock is used for education purposes. And I suppose with our level five students going on placement in mid-March, we have the Dundalk Institute um, veterinary nurse students completing lambing skills and placement as well in the college, along with college open days, agri aware days, etc. We need to have yo's lambing at that at that um, stage. And I suppose another aspect there is that you know we don't use the ram effect. You know also for this reason in the sense that you know one of the benefits of using the ram effect is to tighten up the lamb. And I suppose due to the education needs here we do need a certain level of, of spread in lamb and date, you know, to, to cater for the students and placements as well. Probably a bit earlier, Fergus, than you'd normally go for commercial flock in that area, wouldn't be the earliest in spring, but you said there, like, there's a big teaching need for that flock as well in springtime. Absolutely. So one of the things we pride ourselves on here in the college is the, the access that students have to um, hands-on skills. So I suppose as part of their... Uh, sheep husbandry modules you know they have a number of of practical skills to complete be it lamb and be it tail dockings t- uh, stomach tube feeding you know ringing lambs tails etc so all our students here completing the sheep module get very much hands-on experience and that kind of dictates our, our lamb and date and lamb and spread so to speak Okay, so look, we may actually get into actual management of the flock at the moment you were saying you have 176 shows you're about rams have gone out about three weeks ago now. Maybe just give me a bit of more background on that. Like, what kind of rams are you using? How do you manage the breeding this year? Yeah, I suppose, uh, Kieran, I'll come in here. Um, we would have split the yos up um, a number of weeks before ram turnout. Uh, branded the yos group one, two, and three, and certain yos would have went, would have went with certain rams. Um, group number one would have been predominantly a Suffolk, Suffolk Cross uh, group, going back for Belclare rams for the first cycle. Uh, group number two would have been predominantly a Suffolk or sorry a Texel Belclare cross show, 
um, going back to the Suffolk Rams. Then group number three would have been anything then that we weren't going to breed replacements off, but would have been predominantly be your typical Suffolk, Texel, Belclair, Cross Show, going back with a team of um, terminal side Rams, your Charlie and your Texel. Um, so it would have meant that Anton rattled in the first two weeks would have been rattled with a yellow rattle on their back. Um, and that in group number one and two, they were predominantly your replacements were going to be selected out of that. So from a management point of view, you would have just grouped the yos up um, to suit, uh, you'd say, for number one, your replacements um, of next spring. It's it's a simple enough idea now. Like you're, you're just, you're basically splitting off your two groups with the maternal rams, the terminal ones obviously not keeping, using Brandon, using Radlin. Like when it comes to identifying the replacements next spring, you have a lot of work done. It is, it is. It, it, it actually basically boils back then, then to the yo-yo performance, basically after that, how she lambs down, the type of lamb she has, her mother ability, her milk yield. You have the rest done, you know the genetic that they are coming from from the dam and the sire side. Look. So it does make a lot of it uh, a lot easier. As Fergus touched on there, we have a lot of students with us at that time of year. So it's a great you know, management tool and factor to bring into the shed that you know you can. this is how you identify what yo is going to select, how to lamb down. Um, and it is a great performance indicator on what we and how we select our lambs here for the college flock. Look, it's been a challenging year. I know you'd have monitored your condition right the way throughout. How did the O's what can iniquity in going to the round this year? Yeah, look, challenging. Um, I suppose the big thing this year, especially where we are in Calvin, was the weather, and it seemed to have a knock-on effect throughout the year. Um, it seemed to kind of have torn on us from July. Grass got hard to manage throughout the year. Um, land performance dipped. One thing we did try to manage as best we could is the, the body condition scoring of yos, and something I really tried to involve the students around here, get them into them with the importance of it. Um, about 12 weeks pre-breeding, what had them all in? I think we just added up there, yes, there was 22% of the flock we took out, so it was 38 yos removed from the flock 12 weeks before breeding, and put on to good grass, quality of grass. Well, it just been a bit lower, maybe in around that 2.5, 2.75 type of condition, and gave them a chance to build themselves back up. And um, week before yos went out to the ram, we done an average condition off them of just a wee bit above 3.25, which is down in comparison to other years. I would have liked to have that up at that 3.5 with even a wee bit touch above it um, for ram torn out. But look, a lot of them in the gears come in. We've had a very wet back end here, um, and it has resulted in a, a lower condition going back out to the ram this year. I think it's somewhere seen right across the country. It's been challenging. But again, as you indicated there, like you took care of a lot of them really thin ones, and they're the ones that really tend to pull back the performance. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, um, just maybe to conclude the breeding, like you had your three breeding groups going out initially. What happened then since you're going for the first cycle only for the first two, the maternal groups, you want to call them that. What do you do with them then, Neil? Yeah, so look, it's uh, once we've got, in the case of the Bell Clears there, they were removed after the first cycle, and that would have left that group one and group three could be joined up, which they were done after, say, 14, 15 days. Um, and that just puts then them two groups into a full terminal sire group. So any lamb, the, the rams would have been changed right along to a darker colour. We start with yellow, go up to an orange, maybe or blue after that. Um, so at, that would have been lambing down next February, Mar- uh, next March. Um, group one and group three um, would have been indicated that, you know, with a different rabbit colour on their back, that they are, all their lambs are brought into slaughter. So it's just kind of a management technique as well that we we can uh, outline from a feeding management point of view in the shed next year that we know um, which you look out for in terms of repeats and that, but also that your maternal group of rams have actually been removed at that point. Yeah, so you, you have the later lambs or terminal lambs born, hopefully higher growth rate. Yeah. You're doing a bit for lamb performance next year too by doing that. Then do you, do you group up further from that just from a fertility, ram fertility point of view or what happens? We would have been, yeah, big time, yeah. Um, I tried to stay away if I can from single sire mating, but um, just at the moment we're going to go one Suffolk ram, uh, um, a good five star on both ends, Suffolk ram going to Texel and the Texel Belcler Yos. He is single sire for the first um, for the first cycle, but he will be also joined up then with another group Um which would, from that point of view, you're looking in case there was a lot of repeats. We're lucky that there's not. The ram is working perfect. Um, but just from that point of view, it does give other rams maybe a rest. You have younger rams in the group ram lambs was purchased there. Um, you get to remove them. And then, look, we've noticed there we're into week three now. Um, there's a very low proportion of yo's left to tip. Um, and repeats seem to have slowed down. So probably we'll be looking into next week at some stage for ram removal. If the repeats have slowed down, um, I do tend to try to get the rams out of there you know, as soon as possible too. Like. You touched on two other things there. I just want to put you over them. Look, the rattling, um, you're trying to change your colour. You're going paste to harness, and how often are you changing that now? Yeah, going with paste. Um, 
I do like to have the pace thing. It gives you a chance there, especially with students. You can bring in a group there every couple of days, get to assess the group. Is everything all right? Look, this time of year, wet conditions. There is a bit of lames creeping in at all times. Um, you get to work on things like that. I put, um, like that I said earlier on, the yellow first hand, uh, paste on, change that after, say, typically 14 days. Um, but what I will do is maybe every second or third day of the first cycle, Rams get an update paste on them. Just with the high activity for the first two weeks, I do, do try to not miss um, too many of them yolks getting get, getting coloured. Um, once you come into the second week, which we aren't now, you know, you'll find that you'll come back to maybe twice a week. Um, and the Rams brought in then just to get an updated colouring on them. Um, and then to look, if you do come into over four weeks and it's, it's, the colours changed um, for a third time, once a week typically does it. Like it all just depends on the activity offered. If you're looking and managing yoga there in the morning, every time you go out and you'd see the activity that's happened within the last 24 hours, and you can kind of monitor based on that. But definitely the first first cycle, I like to go in every couple of days just to update that, that, that rattling on them. Yes, yeah, it's when they're busy. Look, you mentioned something else there, and I think it's an important topic that's maybe missed in a lot of flocks. Your Ram Rams, you're pulling them up. Most of them are pulled up after the first cycle, or at least the first three weeks. You're taking them in again. Ram lambs, yeah, definitely, Kieran. Look at um, it's he, 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 we want to have them here in three or four years' time too. Like so, it's just important to look after them. I think a lot of farmers kind of miss that point of view. They think take them as a as, as a general ram. And um, I do like to look after the first cycle, maybe after 15, 16 days, uh, remove them. And um, they've lost a lot of condition, run around a lot of yolks there. And um, so it's time just to get them in, remove them from the flock. Bit of TLC back into them, uh, maybe put them back on a wee bit of concentration just to build that condition back up and leave them ready then for a bit of rest period over over the winter. Like, and um, they would have went out with Texel Rams, mature Rams, and um, the Ram Lambs this year, and there were Charlie Ram Lambs that we bought. But look, there was a group of maybe 68, 60, yeah, 68 yokes there. It's a lot of sheep for two little Ram Lambs running around with. And um, so, look, 15, 16 days, I like to get rid of them out of the, out of the group. As you said, look, it's, it's the long term view on them you're trying to take care of them for common seasons look something you're after doing in the flock there from a management point of view it probably leads us into our grassland aspect of it you've grouped up a lot I assume you're closing up a lot of ground Fergus as you mentioned earlier like your laminate pedalia grass demand in spring is going to be high it's not the earliest farm in the country talk to me a wee bit about closing up on the farm at the moment how much ground are you trying to get closed out how much have you closed and we'll talk maybe a wee bit about the grazing conditions yeah, look, it's the wee bit like we were saying with the body conditions going a challenging year with the weather conditions and it has a knock on effect, um, especially on the grass. And look, we've, we've built grass covers very well there from end of August and early September and we had a very good response to the final application of urea that went out. Um, but just the weather here in the last three weeks has deteriorated a lot. Ground conditions have got very bad. And mix that in with high covers now, you know, of 1,800, 1,900, 2,000 kilos of grass and a hectare coming into it. It leaves it very hard to manage that grass from a grazer point of view. Um, look, some management techniques we've been trying is yo's going into a paddock, splitting the paddock with temporary fences. Try getting the grazer down as best as possible without overworking the yo either. Um, when that ground, you know, when it gets grazed down to that 700, 800 kilo mark and it's getting dirty, yo's been on for three or four days, you have to pull the pin and take them out of it. Um, now, look, I understand that it's not a case of that paddock staying closed for the winter period. What we have been doing over the last three weeks or so is remove the yews, um, move them onto a fresher paddock of grass, let that paddock then, the one that come out, of, clean up again, let the next splash of rain that hits it, cleans it off, washes the grass. Um, we're finding then about a week later, putting the yews back onto that, and they're actually getting the graves that down a wee bit tighter. Um, but it just, you're kind of a, a step forward, two steps back. Um, and, but it's just trying the importance of getting that grass cleaned out for the winter period. Um, I've seen it happen here two years ago. We had a lot of, you know, dead matter grass material in the ground going out the following spring. So I just, I don't want to go into that again, but I, look, it's, it's very hard to manage it just at this time of year, especially. Yeah, look, it, it's not ideal. It has been a difficult grazing season. And look, what you touched on there, I think, is seen around the country. It's been hard to get them graze out some paddocks. As you said, you can't overforce them on it. It's not an ideal way of closing up, but it's, it's all you can do to manage it. Like, Yeah, that, 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 that's that's look at and it's trying to it's trying your best to get it cleaned out as best as possible. Um, the one thing I've noticed is the group size now, you know, before this two weeks ago when you're, you're used in smaller groups, it is harder to get them to clean out a paddock. They tend to do a lot more walking across the grass, even if, no matter how well you try to split that. But look, there, there's, a, there's a good groups of yews out there now. We will be hoping if weather conditions picked up, you will get a you know a quicker graze out, quicker clean out, and then on to the next paddock. Um, look, we're coming into the end of October now. 
you would like to see about 25 30 percent of ground starting to close up we probably have hit that and above it in some cases and um, just with the wet conditions on it like but as the weeks go on and we will end up closing more paddocks and um, into november and probably early december we'll, we'll have most of the farm closed out at that point and um, and that's just look it all depends on the ground conditions that's out there like you know yeah no i look i think that's kind of part for the course and probably the one challenge you have where you're located as that year progresses, grazing conditions don't tend to improve much. So November, December grazing could be getting difficult. Yeah, look, that's that's the it's it's the way it's looking all right. Like um it's just how you manage it. Um we'll probably still keep going the same techniques um in splitting paddocks, get it clean out as best as possible, come back then if you have to get a second grazer off it a week or ten days later and try to get as best as clean out as possible. Um just the whole thing I try to manage it this year is like I understand the yields are just a little bit behind target and body condition scoring going through around. So I don't want to punish them now, um, especially coming into this this period here where you're trying to get, you know, embryo contact in the lamb. You want to try to settle that as best as possible without working or too hard and um, maybe into the mid um pregnancy stage we could start to work them a wee bit harder getting the clean out paddocks but for now it's just trying to move them on keep them keep them comfortable i suppose yeah look at group size other things look even the weather conditions is changing day by day so it is so it's just putting an added challenge on it um look in terms of overall farm we've covered a lot of the yews of what you've done with them on grass and i suppose from a grass and point of view in terms of remaining lambs on the farm, look, it's been a difficult season. There's more lambs left laying around on farms. What have yourself and Fergus done with the lambs this year? Yeah, so I suppose um, only yesterday, Kieran, there was 70 uh, ram lambs. You know, the, they've been outside up until now. Um, I suppose they've been very much lying in water, eating water and drinking water. So the decision was made to to bring them in there and they've, they've been put in on a, a straw bed and uh, they're eating, you know, they've access to for good quality first cut silage and ad lib meal and also meal and troughs as well. Uh, and I suppose it's important to say that, you know, the creep feeders wore out with the lambs. I suppose they're probably five, six weeks on meal outside at grass, but we just felt we weren't getting the performance. So the decision was made to put them in. And I suppose we have the housing um, to do that. And I suppose we just ran a, a weight on them as well. And the average weight at housing yesterday is 42 kilos. Okay. So like they, they're close on Finch and Ferguson, as you indicated there, like given the conditions there at the moment, I suppose the priority has to go to the old flock and any of the remaining lambs on the farm. So probably was a suitable batch to move on. Absolutely. Yeah. And I suppose no more than, you know, your listeners will be well aware, very, very difficult uh, summer back in so far. You know, lamb performance has certainly suffered. You know, we would have taken a number of faecal egg counts over the, the summer period there. And, um, you know, certainly has been a challenging year with worms. But, you know, we have been keeping on top of, of that as well. And I suppose now it's just to finally give them the last push to, to, to get them shifted off the farm as well. And then just the, the remaining new lambs, you're finishing them outdoors, Fergus, are you? Uh, yes, the remaining new lambs, uh, there's 30 odd of those and, and they're on sort of a, a drier paddock and we kind of felt that they are they, they should be fine outside. So we just decided to house the ram lambs, yeah. A simplified management fees on the farms. And I suppose just also to point out, you know, given the very wet conditions, um, the, the lambs would have been, I suppose, uh, dagged there, I suppose, a month ago at this stage as well, just to keep 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 uh, lambs clean and that. Yeah, no, and an important thing when you consider drafting them home from a clean livestock point of view, it, it just helps the, helps the presentation of nothing else. Absolutely, and I suppose, again, coming back to my point earlier on, you know, it's very much a commercial flock, but also from the education point of view, you know, we're, we're te- we have modules here on quality assurance and marketing our lambs. And I suppose it's important that we're demonstrating best practice to, to the learner as well. That's look, it was great getting that update from you both today. Plenty in it. Um, certainly a lot of interesting things going on in the college. It was good getting an insight into what's happening at the moment. Appreciate your time. No problem, Gary. Perfect. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. We'll leave it there for this week's episode. I'd like to thank the two lads again for coming on with us. Hopefully we'll get them back in the coming months to get another update on how the farm is progressing. I have included a link in the description where you can find out more detail about the agricultural college in Ballyhays and some of the courses it's running. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for updates on our sheep programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Target Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us for more episodes.